Is the Euphrates River drying up? The one in Iraq, all the way up to Turkey, basically, comes down from the mountains, uh, and it empties into uh, the Persian Gulf. Could this be the sixth bowl of revelation poured out by an angel? Hmm. Well, let's be clear. The Middle East, and there are certainly other parts of the earth uh, as well, uh, they are experiencing a drought in recent years. Uh, now, there is no disputing that, and this video is not about that, nor its cause, uh, though there is much propaganda to sift through on all of that. However, where we get involved in this discussion is, is this hype or isn't it? Is this Bible or isn't it? That's what we want to know. And that's what we hope you want to know as well. That somehow this is the fulfillment or the unfolding of such prophecy, well, when Revelation warns, and we'll cover it, uh, that the Euphrates River in I Iraq, the one that goes up you know, from Turkey all the way down to the Persian Gulf, and yes, it does mean that one. Uh, that's, you know, written much later in the first century uh, and in Greek. And that word Euphrates is the Euphrates River. It means that one. The one from Eden? Not even remotely, because that one didn't exist before the flood. Watch our Rivers from Eden series. Now, basically... Uh, you know, we prove there that the modern Euphrates nor Tigris uh, are never mentioned in Genesis 2. Uh, the Euphrates does have the same name. It's named after it. Uh, but these, these existed from before the flood when there was no rainfall. Duh. Uh, Genesis 2.5 is very clear. So go watch that. We prove it. Now, why? Well, it's not in the Middle East, essentially. Not the Euphrates of Genesis 2. But this one is, okay? So this is this is what Revelation is saying. Is it that river that goes from Turkey down into the Persian Gulf? That's the one that in the last days, when the sixth bowl is poured out, it's going to dry up. Wow. Now that is an amazing event, many would say, of biblical proportion, right? Now, there is no doubting that there's a drought in the Middle East. That indeed is true. However, does the Bible really not say what it says more clearly than that? Does it leave room for such discussion as many are having, uh, you know, viral videos on YouTube with millions of views telling you that Revelation is unfolding right now? Well, Revelation is unfolding in some ways, but is this event, is, are, are we really at the sixth bowl already? I mean, that's really, 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 really late. And a lot of things need to happen before that. Ah, uh, oops. You know, like bowl five comes before bowl six. Yeah, that's chronological. Oh, and what comes before bowl five? Well, how about bowl four and three and two and one? Do any of these bother to go in and test whether one, two, three, four, and five have happened yet? to then try to conclude that this is the sixth already happening. Hmm. Does this event even fit the language of Revelation? That's the question, and let's test this together, my friends. The Associated Press and many, many, many other news outlets have reported fairly, uh, consistently, really across the board, that the Euphrates River in Turkey and Iraq uh, all the way down to the Persian Gulf, is in fact going through a major drought. That indeed is fact. No doubt about that. Uh, how much drought? Well, you never know about how they calculate, so that could make that somewhat suspect, but still, it's a drought nevertheless. Some have even cited that Turkey, in fact, has the river dammed, as also, uh, it, and, and it has all along, but it allows a certain amount to come through and it's not meeting the commitment that it's made to Syria and the other countries uh, as far as how much water it's allowing through. So there is even a sense that this could even be somewhat, at least portions of it, man-made. But regardless, 
there's a drought. Uh, so th there's no doubting that. Now, they claim that the river flows have fallen in many of these articles that put a percentage on it by 40% in the past four decades. Remember that. That's 40 years. So it took 40 years for it to dry up 40%. Is it dried up? The answer is no. Okay. The articles don't say it's dried up. It says 40%, which means 60% remains. And again, we know that Turkey is not allowing the flows to come through at the rate that it was, whether that be because they're in drought as well or not is the real question. We don't know. Uh, likely they are. It looks like they are as well. So regardless of whether such methodology is truly scientific even, again, there's no doubting there's a drop right there on that river right now. There's a drop. Yes, it's true. So is it drying up? Well, in a sense it is because there's a drought. But is it drying up in the language of Revelation? That's the question. Uh, this is what we care about. Does it rise to the level of the revelation event of the sixth bowl being poured out by the angel? This is what people are saying out there, and we are going to test that. Are they telling the truth, or are they outright liars who can't read? That's the question that we're going to answer in this video. Now, some go further and project that the entire Euphrates will then dry up by the year 2040 or so. Oh, always estimates, of course. Now, what, what are they doing? Well, do they then assume that it will never rain again uh, between now and 2040? Not one drop of rain, period, between now and then. Well, probably that's how they're drawing such a conclusion. But regardless, again, of whether what they're doing is actually scientific, which we're finding much in what we call the science world today, which is scientism, a religion, not science. Um, you know, it's, it's speculative, really, in fact, where you see the tone go with most of these is, oh, it means that global warming is true. Well, does it? No, actually it doesn't. It doesn't prove that global warming is true. Uh, droughts happen. Droughts have happened for many, 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 many centuries, millennia really. Um, in fact, it was a larger drought uh, on record of the Euphrates back in something like the fourth century, somewhere in there. Uh, it had an even larger drying up uh, than even now. So I imagine people that lived in the fourth century probably thought, Oh, the Bible prophecy is coming true, but yet the Euphrates didn't dry up, did it? No, it's still there, right? Uh, so let's go to what the Bible actually says, and let's follow it, not men trying to pull on your strings to scare you. Come on, that's what this is. Now, we aren't given the data, though, uh, in these articles. They, they just don't do it typically. Maybe somebody does out there, but we didn't find any. Uh, they're just saying it and making claims that, you know, they just say so-and-so says, well, come on, give me the support. Where is it? How do we know? But it doesn't matter. You know, news outlets just don't prove things anymore. Uh, they'll even take articles off of the internet and just run whatever uh, without even testing it. And because they can get away with it and it will sell newspapers or get them views uh, online, well, they'll they'll go for uh, because it's all about the money, right? Uh, they lack journalism. There's no doubting that. Uh, there's few journalists left in the world at all anymore. Here they really use tentative language, and really it's speculation to say that the Euphrates will dry up by 2040. And again, is that actually what the Bible says? Is, is that the biblical event? Does the biblical event happened that the angel pours out the vial and the angel and Yahuwah's power is so impotent that it takes, well, already 40 years and now another, what, 20 years or whatever uh, in order to dry up. Uh, 60 years? R really? Uh, does that sound like the God that you serve, the Elohim that you serve? It doesn't sound like the one that we serve. So um, it doesn't sound like it fits, but let's go to the text. Uh, basically, uh, we need to look at things like this in the context of what the Bible actually says, 
many times people will go into the end times and they'll pick out, oh, there's a river in Russia that had red algae blooms and it turned red. Therefore, that's a fulfillment of, you know, the uh, scripture which says uh, the rivers will turn red, except for, uh, well, they didn't bother to read that uh, the entire ocean turns red before that, and then every river, all of them on all of earth turn red after that. Uh, one river in Russia is not all the rivers and the ocean. Uh, that's illiterate. Yet they do it. They do this all the time. And they're doing it because they want to scare people and, of course, get views. But they're trying to lead you down a path uh, that makes you say, oh, it's the end times. Well, it is the end times. There's no doubting that. Uh, but we're not in the tribulation. We're certainly not in the great tribulation. And that's when the six bowl is going to be poured out at the very end of the great tribulation. Now, that's a, that's a, a pretty easy thing to test. So let's test it. Now, we've seen lots of those that will do this, uh, but this one is really easy to unravel, so let's get to it. For instance, uh, want lots of views on YouTube? Well, go ahead and lie to people. Uh, yeah, that works for many out there. We, we have seen a communist channel do it all the time, and they really don't care whether they represent even an inkling of the truth. They'll just say whatever they want uh, as long as it gets views. Kind of like the guys out there saying, there's Atlantis in the Philippines. Well, idiot, you can't even read the narrative because Atlantis is located in the Atlantic Ocean. That's the name. Hello. Read. Learn how to read before you make a video. How about that? Now, uh, this is one of those hacks who takes a fragment uh, on screen here uh, and proves, well, they can't even read. Uh, they scare people pretty good, too. And look at this, 2.5 million views. Wow, YouTube loves liars. There's no doubt about that. Um, they censor those of us who tell the truth. Uh, just got another email uh, this morning uh, before recording this from yet another viewer who said that our number one video, uh, Solomon's Gold Series Part 1, is missing. When they go to search for it, YouTube says it's not there anymore. Hmm. Thank you, YouTube. So nice of you to lie and commit uh, your communist agitation yet again. Now, this channel first hypes that the Euphrates is going bone dry, right? Okay. Oh, it, it, it will, by the way. Oh, it will, according to the Bible, but that's not yet. 40% uh, is not bone dry, is it? The guy's a liar. Uh, he's embellishing. He's trying to sensationalize. Again, he wants your views, uh, and that's really what it's about. Now, he goes right to the uh, seventh bowl, which is next in the timeline, which is Armageddon and the greatest earthquake the earth has ever seen, which obviously we definitely are not there. Uh, now, those are true. That is true. That comes after the sixth bowl. But he fails to cover bowl five, four, three, two, or one. Now, that's pretty disingenuous. It's called fraud is what it's called. Now, uh, does it say an angel pours out the vial or bowl and 60 years later it'll dry up? Maybe. Because <laughs> that's what the articles are saying. Maybe. Hmm. Is Yahuwah really that impotent? Really? Uh, does it actually identify the drought event uh, we are definitely seeing right now, no doubt about that, uh, as the biblical event? Uh, doesn't appear so. No. But we'll read it. Are there not five more bowls in the chronology? Uh, we'll show you. We'll go through them all. So we'll take this opportunity to cover the seven bowls. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, let's read in context so we get it right. Again, he only shares the sixth bowl and, of course, the seventh to really scare you. But he forgets the five before that and doesn't bother. Well, he either can't read or he is a liar. And we're going with the latter uh, because he's not a dumb guy. Um likely who knows don't know the guy have they happened yet let's see now he also jumps another verse from revelation that identifies an army that rises out of the pit 
that 200 uh, million in number. Now, you want to talk about an idiot. He claims that that's China. That's what he's alluding. <laughs> and the Communist Channel does too. Uh, and they don't even realize that they're saying that China is going to kill two-thirds of the entire earth. Now, that is really illiterate. Those idiots. Wow. Now, these soldiers are identified as hybrid beings, not men. <laughs> Uh, oops, <laughs> that's a pretty big miss. Uh, and that's not China. Uh, China's inside the earth now. I, I, we didn't realize that it moved to the inner earth, to a pit. Uh, <laughs> not last we checked. Uh, though they may well wish to encroach there as well, because well, they love to do that. But anyway, uh, this has always been false theology in the church. And you hear it repeated, yet none of the dunderheads that repeat it never, ever, Bother to go back and read what it says, especially in full context. The 200 million army is that of hybrid beings, not men. They kill one-third of mankind. That's not China, all right? Yes, China's done some evil things, no doubt about that. But it's not going to kill one-third of mankind. Now, this is what happens when you read in fragments. Go read Revelation 9. The beings in this army had the head of a lion. The tails, like serpents, fire came out of their mouths. That ain't men. Learn how to read. Now, there are no such events. Uh, and, uh, you know, n this doesn't exist in China. So, this is not China. There are not 200 million hybrids with Heads of lion, tails of serpents with fires coming out of their mouth in China. That's stupid. That's not scholarship. The dumbest things appear to make sense, yet none actually do when you test them. That's why we have to peel back the layers and make sure, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5.21. There just doesn't work. Uh, and it fails quickly, and you'll see it every time. Every time when you test it, you do a thorough testing, it will unravel right in front of your eyes. If it's not truth, it will be proven so. If it is truth, it will also be proven so. Now, he then says the Euphrates is so significant because, well, why? Well, it once bordered the Garden of Eden, which is utterly stupid, false, and occult. Good job there, buddy. You don't represent the Bible. You represent the occult, and you're a liar. That's the truth. They are following the occult creation myth, not the Bible. The garden was planted in the far east, and we, we actually locate it, uh, as well as the rivers from Eden, uh, which do not include the modern Tigris nor Euphrates, which, again, is based on occult nonsense. Uh, neither even existed before the flood. Duh. Learn how to read there, Mr. Scholar. At least you think you are. Uh, we could go on and on. This guy doesn't know the Bible. He doesn't represent it. He doesn't seem to care that he just completely misrepresented it extremely poorly. He doesn't care. So how can we know? Well, let's read and see for ourselves because this guy clearly can't and you're not going to learn anything from him. Let's go to the KJV, Revelation 16, and we're covering all seven bowls here. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time, but we're going to do it because that's the way you read this. You don't just read the one bowl and forget all the rest and then sensationalize that since that's the sixth bowl, then the seventh is coming ah, very soon. Liar. That's not true. Uh, it's really not that long, uh, though, and very easy to understand when you just read it in the progression that it's written because it's very chronological in this sense. Read the whole thing, not just a fragment, which relies on this whole timeline that the previous video that we showed you, well, he's never bothered to read, evidently, or can't understand because he thinks you can just take a little fragment way down the timeline. Uh, and forget that the other five things haven't even happened yet. Duh. Now, one thing we know about Revelation is chapter 16. Uh, that's getting pretty close to the end uh, chronologically. Uh, so, I mean, just right there, we already know about what time frame we're in. Uh, again, duh. Uh, many things have to happen for these bowls to begin to be poured out, period. Now, let's see. And Yahuwah directs this, okay? So 
he knows the timing and he doesn't mess it up. He doesn't make mistakes. And he would he would have to if the Euphrates is drying up right now because it's out of order. The other things haven't happened yet. So that is ridiculous. Now, verse 1, And I heard a great voice out of the temple from heaven saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials, bowls, of the wrath of Elohim upon the earth. And the first went it begins with the first, see? See, one comes before five. I, somebody needs to tell that guy because he doesn't know how to count, evidently. And poured out his vial upon the earth, his bowl. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men. Uh, what? Okay, uh, have you seen that yet? No, you haven't. You most certainly haven't because that we would know because it's the whole earth okay this is going to happen all over the earth you, you would know if this was happening now which men is this talking about oops well this also dates the whole beginning of the seven bowls and this you have to understand now again if you know the timelines which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, so the first bowl is poured out after the mark of the beast is instituted, which is after the beast rises out of the sea, according to Revelation 13, 1. Hmm. And the beast, because he's the one, uh, the second beast, uh, he's the one that actually implements the mark, not the first. Uh, the false prophet also has to rise to power. He rises out of the land. Now, the mark of the beast is there, and, well, we don't have it yet. There is no way. I know some people tried to take COVID and say, oh, it's the mark of the beast. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> you know, first of all, uh, if the vaccine were the mark of the beast— other things have to happen before that happens. Like, hey, the beast has to rise first. He has to rise to power as the world leader. We don't have one right now. We have a government that's setting up a one world government uh, in the background. There's no doubting that. But the beast himself has to have that infrastructure in place because when he rises, boom, he steps into power right away, which means they are successful in uniting much of the world, not all of it, they're never successful in all of it, but much of the world into a one world government that really rules most of the world. He can't do that, just rise and do that. I know there's even movies that try to portray that, but that's nonsense. Um, the, the, the infrastructure has to be in place. Uh, now, it's not some hidden microtrip microchip it can't be uh, because the word doesn't work that way satan cannot attack you directly he can't implant a microchip he can't put it in your cereal he certainly can't put it in your vaccine uh and 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 it have the ability to rob you of your salvation without you knowing no 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 you will take the mark of the beast knowingly you may be deceived yes indeed but that will be your purposeful decision. It has to be because that's the way the Bible has always operated. See, Michael restrains evil and he has restrained Satan. Satan doesn't come and attack you directly. I know a lot of churches say he does, but he doesn't. He's not omnipotent. He's not Yahuwah. He cannot do that. He is one being and he's in one place at one time. So, you know, you've got people going to church this Sunday. They're going to say, oh, Satan is attacking me. Well, demons can attack you, yes, uh, they can oppress you. They can attack you through other people. They can't do it directly, though, either. See, that is a that is a rule throughout Scripture that has always been. If it wasn't, then we'd all just be dead. I mean, Satan is the murderer. That is his number one thing. In the in Egypt, what did he do when he was loosed to kill? Oh man, did he have fun! He went out and he killed the firstborn of every household that didn't have blood on the door, uh, you know, during the Passover, during the Exodus. So, you know, th that was him that did that, by the way, not Yahuwah. And don't go to that scripture and say, Yahuwah, did. no, 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 don't read it that way. Yahuwah allowed it. Uh, the book of Jubilees is very clear. Satan is the angel of death, period. 
And again, he's a murderer from the beginning. We know this. Scripture says that, defines him as the murderer, uh, the ancient murderer all along. Now, if Satan could have just installed microtrips uh, in all of us, uh, so that we lose our opportunity for salvation, it would have already been gone. That, that would have been done a long time ago because the technology has existed for a long time. Um, not a real good start, but let's continue. Another distinct, unmistakable, very easy to test event here, verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. Uh, you know what blood is, right? Uh, uh, it, blood of a dead man. So man's blood. You, you know what that is, right? That's, that's real blood. It's not a red tide. It's not algae. It's not one r river in Russia either, but it's the entire, what is this? The sea, the ocean in this context. No, the word sea in Hebrew is yam, and it's used for river, it's used for lake, it's used for large bodies of water generally, but now we're in Greek and we're late in the um, the New Testament here in this writing. So when it says sea, it's talking about the ocean because it's written long after the flood, and there now is a world ocean. Genesis 2 was was also written after the flood, uh, written down by Moses, but it was given to him by the angel of the presence who started writing at creation and recording things at a time when there was no world ocean. That's why you see the general term yam used there in Hebrew, which just simply, yes, it is sea, but it really just means large body of water. It's the Nile yam is what scripture says. Well, that's a river that's not a sea. The Dead Sea or Salt Sea, uh, Yom, is a lake. Uh, it's just a large body of water. It's not an ocean. Neither are, actually. So, understand the scale, though, of this event. And this is what we're missing in context when they just pull out the six bowl only and say, oh, well, see, 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 this, this has to be it. No, it's not. No one can hide this. <laughs> no, no, everyone will recognize when this happens. Uh, we will know. There'll be no question. No one will be able to ridicule it uh, other than they'll ridicule Yahuwah, but they won't be able to ridicule that the prophecy just happened when it happens. And every living soul died in the sea. That's why. Wow. All marine life in all of the oceans, there's really only one because, well, they're all connected, but that's okay that they give them different names. They all die at once. No, not over 60 years. Come on. Uh, and that's immediately. And by the way, the Euphrates hasn't dried up yet when this event happens. Now, can we read is the question. Obviously, the guy that created that video and all of those out there hyping this, especially those global warming folks who don't know how to read the Bible and can't understand it anyway, um, it's all a lie. So we already know that from the first two because they haven't happened yet. So this is very obvious, but let's keep going. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. Okay. And they became blood. Wait, 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 uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you start talking about the Euphrates drying up, I mean, it's still a river, right? Well, yeah, it is. Uh, okay, it, did it turn to blood yet? Uh, no, it didn't. So it doesn't dry up until it turns to blood. This is not hard to follow the progression. Uh, so very, very easy, and we still have three more bowls to go. So, uh, <coughs> Wrong answer. Thanks for playing. Now, and I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Yahuwah, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged this. This is Yahuwah's judgment, and he's not impotent. So, where this really comes from is a platform of those that don't even know Yahuwah. They, they don't believe in him, and they don't have faith in his word. Let's be honest. So whoever that guy is, we don't know. He may have some big international ministry. He is not any sort of uh, minister of Yahuwah. He doesn't even know him. Let's be clear. Just from that video, you can tell that very clearly. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. Yes, it literally means 
the blood of men, because it said so. We saw it. We read it. It's right there. For they are worthy um, to receive the punishment, of course. And I heard another, another out of the altar say, even so, Yahuwah Elohim Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Indeed, they are. And again, they are not impotent. His word does not return to him void, but it accomplishes what it was set to accomplish. Verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vile bowl upon the sun. Ooh, ooh, has, has that happened? No. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Now, we're not just talking about a hot sun here. They're scorched with fire fire. This is serious. You will know when this happens. When you look at their neighbor and they have what is not just a sunburn, all right, they're not just a redneck, they're on fire. They're burnt with fire. Wow. This, again, uh, cannot be global warming, and there is nothing of such accounts as of yet as this. Uh, men are not being scorched with fire from the sun. It's just not happening. And it doesn't say, oh, the sun got a little hotter. Uh, the earth warms some, which, by the way, is a cycle that's happened. Uh, warms, it cools, it cools, it warms, it warms, it cools, it cools, it warms. That is science over many millennia, uh, though uh, one must question when they try to go back so far uh, in things they don't even know and they just speculate. But anyway, Again, the scale of these uh, events are once in all of history. Uh, this is not something that can be mistaken, nor will we miss it. No, no one's going to miss this. You will not, trust me. Nothing like these has ever happened, and nothing today uh, even remotely compares. Nothing. Um, I know they'll go and they'll say, oh, you know, there's a beach in uh, Brazil where people all got sunburned. Oh, really? Well, that's nice. Is that the whole earth? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, were they burned with heat, uh, like fire? Well, uh, no. No, no, they have sunburn. They have a little, their skin's a little red. Oh, well, that's not the event. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of Yahuwah. Is that what people do? They get sunburned and then they blaspheme Yahuwah. <laughs> no, they'll know what this event is and they'll know he caused it because he says he's going to cause it in his word and he is not impotent. Watch the name of God series, by the way. That's Yahuwah. That is his name, if you haven't. Which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Indeed. Verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vile bowl upon the seat of the beast. You know, the seat that doesn't even exist yet. Ha! Huh. Wow. Amazing. His throne, which he will set up in Jerusalem to rule the world, uh, you know, he'll, he'll do so from the temple. The third temple is built for him. Not for you, who, uh, who doesn't need it. No, he never succeeds in getting the whole world to follow him, though. Understand that. But he does achieve a one-world government of sort. That's what the Bible says. And yes, a third temple will be built. But it'll be built for him. That will be its purpose. Uh, and uh, right there in the seat of his power, that's also called in Revelation 11, spiritual Sodom and Egypt. That's what Jerusalem is today. We're there already, yes, in that sense, but much needs to happen. Much infrastructure needs to take place. The third temple has to be built first uh, before he declares he's God there and before he rules. I mean, I, this, I, we, it's, it's as if this guy who made the video and many others, it's, it's like they just disconnect everything that the book of Revelation says uh, as if none of it ever happens. Uh, it's as illiterate as one can be, totally inept. And his kingdom was full of darkness. Now, did you see the sun out the other day? Uh, you know, do, do we not still see the sun? It's still there. It's not dark. Duh. So that hasn't happened yet. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. 
and blaspheme the Elohim of heaven because of their pains and their sores. Ding, 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 ding. There you have it. What is that? That is absolute proof that this is a chronological account. The sores came when? Oh, well, that's when they poured the first bowl, bowl number one. What are we on? Bowl number five. And bowl number five says that bowl number one was poured before it. I know that's really difficult to understand, but of course the guy that created that video, again, got millions of views, that's very nice for him, but not nice for all the people he deceived because he's a liar. With the pouring of the first bowl, that's when the sores came. And they're still there as of the fifth. They don't go away. Understand that too. Once again, we would know if that happened because it happens all over the earth to those who've taken the mark of the beast, which hasn't happened yet, a beast who hasn't even risen yet. None of it fits now. This demonstrates this is chronological period. There's no disputing that. There's no other way to view this. Now, we are on five, and five identifies that this series of events began with the first bowl and progressed to the fifth. None of the first five bowls have occurred at this point in history as of the making of this video, period. And there's no debating that. And repented not of their deeds. Reminds us of the language of Pharaoh in Egypt, right, in the days of the Exodus, which you will find Revelation really matching very well. Uh, you'll find these plagues, in fact, almost completely match uh, those of that time. Uh, and those plagues were really Yahuwah triumphing and proving that their gods of Egypt had no power. See, those gods, what they call gods, they're all locked within the earth. They are impotent. They have no power. They are nothing. They can't speak to you. You can't speak to them. They have no power, and they're chained and will be until the day of judgment. And on the day of judgment, they will be consumed with eternal fire. Yahuwah will prove his power over theirs. He's the only uh, Elohim, him, Yahusha, his son, right? We know of the Holy Spirit in Scripture as well. This is the same, though as those plagues, very similar. They almost all match, in fact. Uh, there's only one that's like, okay, maybe not, but um, they're there. And now we go to bowl six. Now we get to the Euphrates drying up. Now, after all of this, of which none has happened yet. Get that. And the sixth angel. Now, there were five before it, and those events, neither one has happened yet. Remember that? There's the context going into this. So before you read it, you already know we ain't there. Poured out his vial, bowl, upon the great river Euphrates. Here we are. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, that's where he assumes that that means that China is the Nephilim army uh, <laughs> with the, the heads of lions and breathing fire out of the mouth. E yeah, uh, stupid. The guy can't read. Now, does this say the Euphrates dries up 40%? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. It says it dried all the way up, right? Um, so, absolutely, it doesn't work. Does it say it's going to take 60 years? I mean, is each of these a uh, 60-year-long event? That's ridiculous. Yahuwah is not slack. He is not impotent. When this angel pours the bowl, the Euphrates, which is still there at this point, by the way, it's still there. It's not dried up. Will then dry up immediately. And I'm going to prophesy right now. No, I'm not really. We just know scripture, right? I'm, I'm going to tell you that the Euphrates will not dry up up as a part of this drought. It will not because it has to still be there when this occurs. It will still be flowing so it's not going anywhere. It will survive this drought. Uh, will it be less? Maybe. Then again, maybe the rains will come and maybe it will be more. This is not uncommon historically. And again, we ain't prophesying. The Bible does, because it says it's there at this point, and we're not there yet. 
So here's where we are, and we'll go ahead and cover the seventh bowl too while we are here. But let's recap so far what happens. Bowl one. The mark of the beast is implemented, and that hasn't happened yet. Failure from the outset. Sinners will be plagued with sores on those with the mark of the beast, and that hasn't happened yet. The image of the beast is already erected at that time as well, uh, already being worshipped, and that hasn't happened yet. I mean, where is that image? Oh, I think maybe it's... No, forget what you think and stop trying to play symbolic nonsense. This will be a physical image of of the actual beast. Come on. He declares he is God. Have we read the Bible? Do we understand it? It's just like Nebuchadnezzar. He erected a statue. Well, I think it was 90 feet tall, right? This will be similar to that. The beast has risen at this point, and he's in power. And nope, none of this has happened yet. Again, want to warp through these and say, oh, no, but they don't have to be in order. Yes, they do. Again, because the fifth bowl tells you this is chronological, and this one has to happen before the fifth bowl, according to the fifth bowl text, when you read it, and we did. Bowl two, the entire ocean turns to blood, not one stream or river, the entire ocean, and not even rivers yet. Understand, the ocean goes first, not the rivers. Okay, that hasn't even remotely happened. Uh, And no, a red tide in one area does not denote the entire ocean turning to blood. And it is the blood of men. That's what it says. Read it. And marine life, all marine life dies in the ocean worldwide. Wow. I mean, it would be rather hard to miss that, right? I mean, you're still eating fish from the ocean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of us do, right? And they're still there. Um, yeah, have you been swimming in the ocean? Have you have you looked at, you know, any? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it just hasn't happened yet. Uh, and we're only on the second bowl, and this has failed twice. Now, this expands to the third bowl. Now, all the rivers on earth did, did, did all the rivers on earth, including the Euphrates, understand that, are turned to blood. The Euphrates is not blood yet. Nope. Now, the blood of man is what it says, not a red tide, not algae blooms or bacteria-driven appearance uh, that looks like it's red. Uh, That's not what this is saying. This is literally turned to man's blood, which is exactly what happened in Egypt. That water was turned to man's blood. It wasn't just red. It wasn't food dye that Moses figured out how to manufacture and pour in there. Uh, Now, is the Euphrates not still a river? Yeah, still is. Yep, 60% of it's still there. That means it must turn to blood before it dries up, right? Right. That hasn't happened, and we aren't there yet for the fourth bowl. The sun is superpowered, and no, we certainly have not experienced that yet. Yes, there are droughts. There is also manipulation admitted by governments of weather manipulation, uh, which no one knows the impact. I mean, that goes all the way back to Vietnam, at least, uh, in government documents. So there's nothing there that should be a surprise to anyone. Uh, But we have not seen this change in the sun, as men will be scorched with fire. Have you ever seen someone who survived a fire? Have you seen their burns? Are you seeing people like that from the sun? Then it's not happening yet. And it's not going to be just one here or there. This is going to be worldwide. Now, that's far more serious. Now for the fifth bowl, still not there yet, the beast's throne is attacked. Well, that means he has to have a throne built. Uh, That means that the temple will be built. And, you know, all of these things that have to happen that have not. Uh, So none of it makes sense. It means he has to have risen to power, which he has not. uh, Which means he has to have risen from the sea, which he has not. Uh, neither have happened. We are not experiencing darkness, and in the Exodus, this is defined as far more significant than some cloudy days. We know this, and that's the precedent for this darkness. 
this ain't playing. Uh, so much so that men gnaw their tongues. Uh, they bite their tongues in pain, of course, also because of the sores. Uh, wow, that's pretty serious. Again, they blaspheme Yahuwah because he does this. That's not a cloudy day, and that's nothing of what we've experienced thus far. Uh, it's not a natural event either, nor is it a man-made one. That's also a fraudulent way to uh, say that, which some articles do. Yahuwah sent his angels with the charge for each of these. It is a supernatural event, period. And there we go again. The sores are affirmed as having already happened prior, but they're still there as a bull five. So this is chronological. Uh, then and only then, after advancing through the first five bowls, do we finally get to this sixth bowl. The Euphrates then dries up. Why? Because the angel pours the bowl that is specifically to dry up the Euphrates. Uh, it's still there. It hasn't turned to blood yet, which had to already have happened for that to have happened. So the angel hasn't poured his vial on the Euphrates yet because it's not blood yet. And I mean blood, man's blood. That's what it says. Now, it uh, takes 60 years for the river to dry up. Nonsense. Uh, this happens immediately. Again, Yahuwah is not impotent. When he says he'll dry it up, snap your fingers, done. So this thinking fails miserably. It is clearly a lie, and it's sensation, uh, you know, sensationalism to uh, basically mislead people that we are further along into the last days than we clearly are. But let's go to the seventh bowl while we're here, and let's understand it too. Verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now, we are now at the preparation for the final battle here, uh, which is going to tell you, Armageddon, uh, this is the end, folks. That's what this is. And uh, the sixth bowl was just before this. So you can see the chronology is very clear here. Uh, all those others need to happen before we get to this seventh. And no need to scare people about this yet, period. Uh, the guy's lying when he does so. Uh, prophecy so clear on that. Verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. See, we're supposed to watch. And no man knows the day or the hour. That's clear in Scripture. But he does say, Yahushua's very clear. Watch our rapture videos. We will know the season. In fact, he does here again. Also watch our Daniel's 2300 days, which is incredible. Now, we are to watch. By the way, do we date set? No. Do we know the day or the hour? No. Can we calculate the season roughly in estimation? Yes. Watch it. You'll see for yourself. And keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Armageddon's where they gather for the final battle. We actually cover that too uh, in location in answers in First Enoch. Verse 17, and the seventh angel, now we're at the seventh bowl here, poured out his vile bowl into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Just like Yahushua said, it is finished on the cross, the stake, the tree, whichever. Uh, this is the last one. This is it. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. Well, how great was this earthquake? Can these guys go around and find a powerful earthquake and claim, Oh, it's happening. It's happening now because, well, there was an 8.3 earthquake. Well, that's a big earthquake. Yeah, 
But that doesn't hit the whole earth, does it? This hits the whole earth. They don't even understand remotely the scale of this event. Uh, they cannot find it in doing things like that. It's nonsense. Such as was not since men were upon the earth. Never happened. This is the greatest earthquake in all of history by far. So mighty an earthquake and so great. See, there's never been an earthquake like this. Uh, when you hear about a 7, even an 8, we get those. Those aren't new. They might be rare, especially a 9, but it, it's, it happens. And when you see giant earthquakes like that happen, understand that you probably are going to see something on the scale of something a thousand times worse at the very end, assuming any of us are still alive for it. Again, we do uh, estimate the timeline in our videos. Uh, in fact, it's in a series, How Much Time is Left. Watch it. How do we know, though? Well, look what happens. Let's just see. And the great city, Jerusalem, that's very clear in Revelation, was divided into three parts. Why? That is where the beast rules the earth from the world capital at that time and that hasn't happened yet either babylon the great watch that video you'll see we prove that and the cities of the nations fell now this seems to be all the cities now you saw 9 11 now multiply that by thousands we have never seen an event like this one and john told you so i mean it, he he gave us those words the the language is there so how can we miss it we're not reading that's why that guy isn't especially uh that made that video now and great babylon came in remembrance before elohim to give unto her this is the harlot of babylon uh the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath again that is jerusalem israel we prove which is spiritual sodom in egypt in revelation 11 no it's not new york city there's tons of cities out there that would fit the narrative of being evil absolutely there's no doubting that but they're not the ones in the bible being identified in revelation very clearly again watch our babylon the great video and every island fled away oh whoa, whoa, whoa what uh, I, did we read that? You know, they, they take one event where an island might be sinking. What? So what? I mean, yeah, okay, fine. No, no problem. Cover it. It's newsworthy, but it's not revelation worthy. It's not all the islands fleeing away from the greatest earthquake, a worldwide earthquake, something like we have never seen. They can't. So, Every island will move from its place here. Now, that is truly an earthquake we have no scale for, but we will not mistake. We will know when it happens. And get this. And the mountains were not found. All the mountains on all of earth fall. Wow. And we have no idea just like with the flood they underestimate that especially in scholarship they have no clue because they can't read what the text says they don't believe it they don't believe in the bible that's the reality for most bible scholars they're not scholars of the bible they're scholars of the occult and they're scholars of their doctrines of men that's what they're scholars of and we've proven that many times on this channel just watch our selection of videos uh, there's over 470 now so go have at it uh, we have no idea just how bad this will be, but it will be the kind of events, all of these bowls, that you will know when each one happens if you are alive for it. There will be no doubting who did it and what it is and that it is a match to prophecy. There'll be no questioning. There'll be no debating. You will know. Verse 21, And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, Oh, there's a hailstorm in Argentina, right? Uh, and the hail is as big as softballs. Oh, that must be Revelation, right? Learn how to read these channels out there and these blogs and these, uh, you know, even preachers in some cases, they're just plain liars who cannot read. That's so clear because this tells you what kind of event this is. You cannot mistake this. So, 
This doesn't remotely qualify. We have never seen a hail event like this. And you will know when it happens. You will not mistake it. There'll be no question. Again, no debating it. You'll know because these are giant. John tells us, and then, of course, they ignore the scale that he gives us because he tells us every stone about the weight of a talent. Do you know how big a talent is? I mean, we'll cover how big that is in a moment. Let, let, let me get to that. But, but like nothing we've ever seen before. It's not a softball. It's far larger. Not even remotely close. This is a scale we don't understand. And men blasphemed Elohim because of the plague of the hail. I mean, did, did they do that in Argentina because they got hail the size of softballs or wherever that happened, by the way? It happens, by the way, uh, in different places around the earth. And yes, it's, it is certainly something of note when you see large hailstorms. There's no doubt about that. But it's not Revelation playing out. Sorry, it's just not. Uh, does this say uh, with any of these bowls that, well, you know, Yahuwah had the angel pour, uh, you know, one seventieth uh, of the vial, uh, <laughs> you know, into the water so that one seventieth of the waters were turned to blood? Well, that hasn't even happened yet either. But the point is, no, doesn't work that way. Does he say, you know, oh, well, there'll be, uh, you know, larger hail and larger hail, and it will progress and get larger and larger and larger and larger until finally it gets so big that it's a talent big. Uh, no, I mean, that's not reading. <laughs> For the plague thereof was exceedingly great. That's what John says. Are we getting that? Exceedingly great. This is huge this is a massive event and by the way this is after all the islands are moved from this place the greatest earthquake on all of history uh the whole earth is shaken at such a level we can't even fathom and now this isn't just a hailstorm folks this is exceedingly great like we have never seen so when the seventh bowl is poured, the final events of the Great Tribulation unfold. If you haven't been through even the first parts of the Tribulation, well, then we haven't, uh, you know, we're, we're not there uh, yet. Uh, you, you're not, you know, you're just not there yet. And you know you're not there yet. You, you, you can know this. Uh, you can test this and you can know. Uh, with this one, before it is even poured, uh, demons gather sinners to battle at Armageddon. Then once it's poured and in the air, mind you, uh, not even on land specifically, uh, though it will land there, of course, uh, the greatest earthquake in all of history will erupt, uh, one so large that Richter has no such scale. Uh, it is beyond our imagination. Uh, cities will fall, whole cities all over the world all of them. Which, by the way, you know, you think about the, the buildings that we're building. Oh, it's so wonderful. Even your church. No, your church is going to fall. He doesn't need it. Uh, he didn't build your church. He doesn't need buildings. That's not Yahuwah's way. Jerusalem, though, will be split into three. That hasn't happened. Uh, and it will have to be the world capital at that point, which hasn't happened. Uh, it will be Babylon the Great from where the beast rules. You want to call it something else? Doesn't matter. That hasn't happened yet either, right? So, doesn't work. Every island will be moved from its place. That hasn't happened. And all the mountains will disappear. No, that hasn't happened. Look out your window. Are the islands still there? Yeah. Are the mountains still there? Yeah. And have you ever seen hail this large? Oh, oh. <laughs> no. And we're going to get there. We ain't there yet. We're just not. And let's talk for a moment about this final event in terms of this hailstorm. Uh, it's more than a bad hailstorm, folks. Uh, this is great hail from heaven. The weight of one talent. That's not a joke, uh, which is about 30 kilograms or 66 pounds, one chunk of hail. Wow. Now, according to a quick search on Wikipedia, again, people run math at different ways. You want to figure a talent different, that's fine. The point is, this is monumental, and this will be off the charts of anything we've ever seen. So, want to use a lesser estimate, a greater estimate, doesn't matter, go for it. Uh, you'll still enter a, an arena in math the world has never seen on this scale. 
And that's the point. According to the Weather Network, the largest hail we have ever seen in recorded history. Okay, if there's someone who says there's some a little bit larger, fine, but it's still nowhere near this scale that we're looking at here. That's the point. So we're using this one source. We don't care who argues and debates back and forth that uh, this one is 828 grams in weight. Okay, so if you find one that's 900, if you find one that's 1,000, it's nothing compared to Revelation 16. Uh, so this is basically just a little less than one kilo. Wow. Uh, that's big. There's no doubt. But again, nothing compared to the Revelation 16 event, which will be over 30 times larger than what you're seeing here from this one source. And this is the largest we've seen that we know of in history at this point. We've never seen hail that size. When a 30 kilo or 60 pound hail hits your house, uh, you'll know it. Yeah, you'll know it. And when it's happening all over the world, which we've never seen a hailstorm of such, well, we will know it. Again, you won't need to try to remember. You won't need to guess or speculate. Oh, gee, I don't know. Do you think, do you think that could be the event in the Bible? You mean the 60-pound, 30-kilo hail? Yeah, uh, yeah, you will know. <laughs> you won't have to look uh, even at the news uh, you know, and uh, try to figure out, oh, well, maybe. Do you think maybe? There'll be no doubt. Uh, you will not wonder when this event happens. Uh, that will go through your house. Your car will be demolished completely. The damage is beyond anything we could ever imagine, and people walking the streets are going to be dead. I mean, this is no joke, folks. This is a proportion and scale we just have nothing to compare it to. Now, that's the scale of all of these here. These are major worldwide events, not an isolated river turning red uh, due to algae blooms or whatever, uh, not because we had another large earthquake, which is large for our day, yes, but not on this scale. Certainly not the Euphrates in drought, which has nothing to do with this prophecy in Revelation whatsoever. This has no bearing on Revelation getting closer. It has nothing to do with it. There is a drought in the Middle East. That's a bad thing, but big deal. Have there not been droughts in the Middle East? Well, just read the Bible in the days of Abraham, in the days of Isaac, I mean, I mean, or Jacob. Uh, you know, this is pretty easy to see that that area has droughts sometimes, and sometimes they're extremely severe. It happens. That is not abnormal necessarily. Might be rare uh, on the full timeline, but it's happened many times over. This is a ludicrous lie and line of thought biblically as these guys who are creating these videos, creating these articles, and creating all of this hype are liars very clearly. And now you know better. Don't fall for it and don't be fooled. Yah bless. We have over 470 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year plus now. Uh, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often. And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon. And our new podcast is available for all of our videos pretty much as well. All links in the description box. And friend us on Facebook at The God Culture Space hyphen space original. That is our only Facebook page. Only one that we're checking and using. Uh, if you prefer an alternative... We now have Parlor and Gab, links below. We have six books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries. Uh, and actually, I correct that, it's now seven. How about that? Uh, with our new release, the first book of 
Bible History Illustrated, Enoch's Animal Dream Visions. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it's available in hardcover or softcover there. Also, this uh, first book of Bible History Illustrated is available only in color. We're not even doing this in black and white. Only in color, and you can get it in color, uh, softcover, or hardcover on Amazon. Uh, coming to the Philippines soon, not yet, we're not there yet, but we will get there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interiors, as so many had requested that overseas, uh, rightfully so. Uh, we already have that in the Philippines. Uh, the Philippine copies have color maps inside already. Uh, that too is available on Amazon in hardcover, softcover, both in color or in black and white soft cover, if you wish. Uh, all books, including Solomon's Treasurer, are now free in ebook. Uh, we're not going to do an ebook for this one because we have this video series animated, and we're going to release one with all five uh, as one video as well. So, no need to do an ebook when we'll have the video animation. Uh, more coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.